In a lot of matchmaking games, it always feels like the enemy's aim is amazing, or your teammate is just terrible. My hacking are holding me back, and the enemy team is teammates every game. The thing is, even simple things like flicks bring out the worst in the enemy team. So what's actually going on here? Let's look at a few situations. The first on B-side of cash. Let's first look at my perspective. It seemed like a normal shot, right? Well, let's look at his perspective. From what I can tell, it feels like I shot faster from his view. The reality of cold hard timing says otherwise, as in, I was in his view longer than he was in mine, which is strange considering how different the shots feel. What's going on? I believe this doesn't have to do with our computers, networks, and the game, and rather, it has to do with anticipation. It sounds simple and we all have an idea of this, but seeing the issue in text can clear this up more. As we know, if you're alert and expecting someone, you can react with actions faster than if you were just relaxed. There's a fancy term for this, with multiple tests with fancy data to support this basic concept, called perceptual reaction time. I have to say, this is probably the reason we often feel like the guy peeking you is wall hacking and must be pre-aiming you. But wait, wasn't there a video over how peeker's advantage isn't really a thing, and in most cases, the defender has the upper hand? Well, yes, but I think in this case it's different. The video is fantastic and has a lot of data to support all the technical information. The guy is super smart and you should really look at his videos. But in this video, he states the physical reason why a defender has the advantage is that the crosshair is set, they're prepared for the enemy while the attacker will be in a worse position, and also has to stop before moving. However, to me it appears anticipation has a larger effect than all of this. You may have seen this video I posted previously, asking for you to review clips and your reaction times with them. There were some top tier memes in the spreadsheet and a lot of confusion, but the information really showed how assumption and anticipation really can change the outcome of something. In this clip, the average reaction time of over 900 people was over 0.4, while in this clip, the average time was just over 0.3. This shows that the peeker will usually be able to react faster, even though in a lot of cases, they will have a worse angle and will see the enemy later. I know a lot of you had problems with how the test was done. I may in the future do a video that graphs everyone and you can see where you stand, and explain my reasoning on everything. Thing. A PDF with all the information of everybody is in the description. Just note that I deleted some that were impossible, like they were over 3 seconds, some people had messages that I deleted so I could get the average, and I also had to add some decimals to some of the answers. So what's the reason for the time difference? In this position, when you know the callout the enemy is in, you can assume a lot more accurately where they are and where they will be, versus these two positions, where you need to be ready for the enemy to peek in two sides. Additionally, the person peeking knows when they're about to see the enemy, while the enemy has to be alert at all times as they don't know exactly when the attacker will show himself. Because of this, the peeker can anticipate more accurately and can have faster reaction times. Like, if I said that a yellow square will appear on the screen after 3 seconds, clap when you see it, versus the same test but with a 30 second window where it can pop out at any time, which do you think you'll be able to clap faster to? Or what if the yellow square is behind a wall, and you have to clap as soon as you look around the wall and see the square, versus the square coming out from one of the two sides? and you have to clap whenever you see it. Which do you think you would react faster to? Exactly. In short, anticipation has a large effect on our reaction times, and can make us shoot super fast if you get to choose where to see the enemy. Meanwhile, the defender can be so focused for only so long, and suffers even though they have more time to set up. In other situations, the defender has to look at multiple places, while the peeker only has to choose one area at a time. And that peeker can have a better idea of where the enemy is, meanwhile the defender has to pay attention to multiple angles. These combined can make for very fast looking shots, even if you had the enemy appear on your screen before you appeared on theirs. In the following clip, we both see each other at roughly the same time, and though I do have better cover, the fishiness of the clips is vastly different. Hex, right? Totally pre-aimed him, right? I have a slower than average reaction time, like a lot lower, but being able to prepare myself to the exact second, where the enemy only has a general idea of when I'll peek out, means I have a large advantage and look totally wally, not the robot. In the final clip, we can see a situation where the peeker actually has the time advantage, but that's not the fishy part. Look at where I'm looking, and then I instantly snapped him! Well, if we look at my perspective, it's not fishy, it's just a good shot. I'm not hacking, I'm just an amazing player. The sad thing is, our models from even just a small distance seem to only move noticeably in large snappy movements, and thus these shots that are smooth seem to be a lot more crazy than in reality. Here it is in practice, my pro hacker Weedman will demonstrate. See, nothing too fishy. Again, from his POV, we can surely see there isn't anything going on. What about from the enemy's POV? 
This may not be the best example, as Weed Man sucks, but you can see the difference between even simple flicks like this, where they simply just move to the enemy in a reasonable time. Vertically, there's even less movement, as it looks like I didn't even move my head, even though it's obvious in my POV that I do a lot of readjusting while aiming up. The truth is, our models aren't lying to us. It's our perception and our limitations as humans who aren't designed for Counter-Strike. A lot like to find reasons not to put them at fault, and when they're given something that looks at least a little bit fishy, we often want to drop the accusation bomb, even though it may just be our weak mind's fault. This makes the idea of post-game reports even more attractive, where instead of only being able to report players during the game, making players able to report others after while watching the demo could lead to a lot less false reports, saving time for those selfless overwatchers who can spend more time banning actual scum of the earth, who cheat in a virtual video game. In short, I believe it's our mind's weaknesses and perceptions that trick us to think the enemy is cheating. Of course, this doesn't cover all cases. There are plenty of actual cheaters in matchmaking, but knowing the difference between our perception and the reality of situations can save a lot of keyboard and monitor life, and a lot of Overwatchers' time, except Overwatch players. Fuck them.